stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. A moment of silence, please. Likewise with Mr. Hunter. He drives in from Worcester. Okay. I need a, a motion on the floor for the approval of the agenda for a regular board meeting on the 17th, 2019. If I can make a motion uh, to approve the agenda for August uh, 13, 2019. Second that. Is there any discussion? Madam President. Um, there's something that I don't see on the agenda that we had discussed in an executive session a meeting or so ago. Um, so without divulging anything, is that going to be excluded? It was, I'm sorry, I'm finished. Uh, it was an appeal. I, uh, I got a call and that's on hold. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's on hold. Okay. That's why it's on and other than that, is there uh, if there is nothing else that needs order of business need, does not need to be altered? Uh, there was one thing that Ms. Sanderson wanted on, and I did talk to Mr. Janetti, and that was about travel to Miami, Florida, uh, to a uh, CUBE conference oh. in September. But she didn't have a cost, so uh, Mr. Janetti would like to get a cost first to bring it through. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Ms. Skilbo. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Ms. Jack Ms. Jacqueline Adair. Yes. Mrs. Uh, Sebekovich. Yes. Mr. Hunter. Ms. Anderson. Mr. Shad. Yes. Four zero motion passes. I don't see anybody. Is there anyone in the audience that wanted to address the board? Okay, so we'll pass that. Um, we don't have any board recommendations this time. I do, Madam President. Oh, what's that, Ms. Um, and, and we skipped the approval of minutes. Oh, uh, I sure did. I'm sorry. And so, yeah, I, yeah. So, Mr. Gennetti isn't here. There are no minutes. Um, so I guess we'll have to hold off on that once again. Right. Okay. Well, I, I just got the message from him that he would not be able to attend. When I spoke to him yesterday, he said he would be here. So uh, maybe some state business or something came up with the district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what that is. And I guess he will explain that himself. So we won't have a treasurer's report tonight. No. We'll move on to our support. Well, I do have a, a question, just for the record. Um, I asked in a previous meeting uh, who, in this no Vicky's absence, who's doing the minutes? It's supposed to be his responsibility. That's what the law says. So, does any do you have an answer to that, Madam President? I don't. Uh, as far as I know, everything was his responsibility, and he's supposed to be taking care of it. If he has someone else that's going to do it or that's working on it, I, I don't have any idea. Okay. We have the record show that Ms. Sanderson has entered to meeting at 4.35 p.m. <coughs> Welcome, Ms. Sanderson. <coughs> so what we'll with the superintendent? Oh, no, I do have a, a, a request, board presentations and recommendations. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, if I may, um, Madam President, I recently became aware of information concerning a movement by parties known and unknown that plan to build dorm-like structures behind P. Ross Berry, which is located on the far east side of the city. I and others who reside in neighborhoods surrounding the school have never been involved in any discussion, nor have we been given an opportunity to express our opinions about this move. I attended a block watch meeting last Thursday where Eastsiders, some of whom do not live in the immediate area, gathered to express their concerns and displeasure about this idea. We learned that our second ward council rep, T.J. Rogers, as well as CEO Jennings, did not know, did not know about this plan. We also learned that Pastor Donaldson, the pastor of Rising Star Baptist Church, located on Mortal Avenue, not in the immediate area, had been attending a series of meetings with Judge Delick and others. He doesn't live anywhere on the east side, but I believe he lives somewhere on the south side. Pastor Harrison, Union Baptist uh, Church on the lower north side, also has been involved in these meetings. He not only doesn't live in the area, but actually lives in Medina, Ohio. My concern as a member of this board, school board, and especially as a resident of the east side, is simply, how dare they? This board, once again, has been excluded from any decision-making authority, even when Delic and this group dare to talk about leasing land from the district. I'd like to know who from the district made that decision. So I'm stating on behalf of my neighbors that we do not want those buildings constructed behind P. Ross Berry, and for that matter, anywhere else on the east side. Uh, Madam President, um, Mr. Moranto indicated at a previous meeting that he would invite Jennifer Merritt to a board meeting to present information about the district's relationship with that school. I didn't know about it at that time, about this dorm thing at that time. Since then, this new information has come to light, so I will also invite Judge Delly to attend so that we can hear firsthand um, what her plans are for our children and so that she can hear firsthand where I stand and perhaps other board members stand on this issue. Especially based on her televised statement, we have, we should have, she's telling us, we could have come to her with our concerns. Yes, we could have, had we known about it. So Madam President, um, I'm, I'm bringing this to the board's attention that um, I will be inviting uh, Judge Delic to whatever meeting she'll be able to attend, and I'd ask her to um, present at that section, um, uh, section Roman numeral eight, board recommend recommendations presentations. Thank you. Yes, I will. Yes. Yeah, not a whole lot tonight. Just uh, as you know, making last minute. Uh, arrangements will be in school. Tomorrow uh, we're going to have a uh, convocation with all uh, district teachers and administrators uh, and other district employees are invited but administrators and teachers it's mandatory that they attend. It's going to be at uh, 8.30, so beginning at 8.30 at East High School and uh, Mr. Jennings will be officially introduced I guess by Mr. Uh, Richards from the ABC and uh, he, he will, uh, Mr. Jennings will uh, give a presentation to the, the entire district staff about his vision, uh, what, what he sees the future of the school district, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, of course, board members, you're welcome to attend if you can make it, at least for that part of it. And the next two days will then be uh, you know, professional development with uh, building principals, building staffs, uh, during various uh, activities, and that will continue on until uh, uh, Friday. They'll be in their own buildings, and Monday, uh, the rest of the staff will report in their own buildings. And of course, Tuesday is the first day of school for all students. And so, uh, I know a lot of the questions that uh, you'll want to ask concerning enrollment, staffing. Uh, I would uh, say that at the next board meeting, 
uh, I'll be glad to present any any information you would want to have uh, concerning those things. But then at least we'll have a real picture of where we're at rather than uh, guesstimates or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that in mind, uh, the uh, just to let you know that the uh, administrative staff did spend all last week uh, in administrative retreat uh, out of the Mahoney County uh, Career Center uh, doing various professional development activities. And uh, Mr. Jennings uh, apologized for not being here tonight, but he had another commitment. But his intent is to come to the board meetings, as he said. And uh, any information that the board would request, anything provided to the ADC, uh, his intent is to provide that also to the school board and uh, establish, as he said, a working relationship uh, with the board. So that's about it. Okay, any questions for Mr. Um, and I, if I could add, okay, uh, uh, well, to the whole board, mm -hmm. it might be a good idea if, uh, if, if you would like Jenny Merritt to present, would you like her to present at the same time as Judge Dell comes to the meeting? Since you know, part of Jen Merritt's that work, that's okay. Morning County High School. That's okay. okay for All right. So whenever you whenever you set that, I'll be glad okay. to. Okay. Sure. I'll talk talk to about that. I, Madam President, I do have, of course, I have yeah, questions. Thank you. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Moranto. Um, you gave us a report on staff attendance at our at a previous meeting, and I, of course, am actually too through. Excuse my use of that phrase, um, but the, the way this document was prepared and presented. Um, I don't know who did that. That came out of the payroll part. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And that's where I was told to get it from, so that's where I got it. Okay. Well, there were two buildings not included in the report. Abbreviations were not defined. I had to kind of try to figure out what the heck they were talking about. If these people were supposed to be using spreadsheets, this is nothing that I've ever been trained to do, to prepare or to interpret. Uh, I got, um, uh, and I did my own, tried to do my own analysis, and it was virtually impossible. I don't even know what the heck this stuff means. So, so my, my concern is, still don't have still don't have adequate information about uh, staff attendance, at, at least in our buildings um, last school year. And without that information, I have to wonder, how are um, administrators, um, what are they using to make decisions about staff attendance? What information are they using to dis determine the uh, excessive use of substitutes, which should be reflected in their bu budgets? Um, but most importantly, what about the negative impact on student academic achievement? Is staff attendance even being tracked? If I hadn't asked for it, I have to wonder if it was even being tracked. And I'm asking that, that in some way, shape, or form, if I, if you guys remember this, if you can pass that down, and take a look at the next one. That at least that, that was a little more clear, the way it was presented back when we had um, Dr. O'Neill is our, our chair of uh, the commission, but this is um, this is just not um, that, that the way that information is presented is not useful for anything. And of course, uh, is that all staff? Those numbers? Is that all staff, or is it just teachers? What what we were given was it all te Was it just teachers? Yeah, that was just teachers. Okay, and and of course there's. Uh, some of those absences may be legitimate because, you know, folks do get sick, um, have health issues, and our, our staff was getting, getting up there in terms of age, and you know what happens to us as we age. We, all kinds of health issues start to surface. But there's no way to determine if these, were, um, these absences were um, approved in advance, People are taking off for, you know, extended sick leave or, uh, or what, okay? And so, so again, um, this kind of information, if we get, get it in the right format, would be, um, we should be using to determine the effective and efficient use of our tax dollars. I've asked, I don't know how many times, about um, 
the cost of substitutes last school year and the year before that, and I've yet to get that. I know that's not your, your responsibility, Mr. Moranto, but I've slow. If I could interject, we now, yeah, yeah. We, we now have a new uh, uh, title is uh, Chief <laughs> of Human Capital. I know, okay. Okay, basically yeah. HR. Yeah. So I think uh, now a lot of that information you're asking for, I'm going to uh, ask him, and I'm, I'm sure he'll be able to provide that for us. Okay, so okay. are you telling me that each building is not keeping track of their, their own attendance information? That it has well, to be being tracked by the HR department? No, they, they have, I mean, when, when somebody, we use the ASOP system, so in other words, when somebody is off, teacher, uh, any, any uh, AFSCME employee, uh, they have to go on ASOP. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's a record of that, yeah, mm -hmm. for every building. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, as I, I told you, uh, maybe I didn't tell you last time, but they could run a report showing which is like this big, showing every uh, time somebody's off the name. I mean, it, it, we, we have it by name. We don't just have it by, you know. Uh, they thought that would be easier to, to look at. But if you, I mean, it's rather lengthy. It's like pages and okay. pages with all the names of anybody that's off every day they're off and the reasons. Okay, now, that information um, was, would be getting down in the weeds. What I'm looking for is, is trends. Okay, if this building has uh, three math teachers off every week for two or three days, or, the, or that kind of general information, I don't need to know who these people are. That needs to be something that building administrators need to deal with and eventually HR. Okay, but my, my concern is this excessive use of sick leave uh, one of our buildings used, I guess I, uh, I understood it correctly, 835 days total of sick leave. So I know that had to be more than one, you know, that's more than one person. But, but okay, so what does that tell me overall about people not being regular in attendance, which every management, any person that's ever been a manager, has the right to demand that their folks be regular in attendance. But then what also does it tell us? That we're using substitutes that, if we can get them, and that costs us extra money, okay, because we gotta pay the teacher sick leave or whatever, and we gotta pay the sub uh, to come in at $120 or $150 a day. And it also tells me that because we're using subs, our regular ed teachers, our regular teachers, are not in the classroom teaching our children. So duh, could that not have a negative impact on how poorly our children are performing on these, on these state tests? Yes, I think so. And so that's, you know, that's the overall reason, those are the overarching reasons for my wanting uh, um, attendance information. Okay, now what, what happens, in, you know, when you break it down, when you guys break it down is, is another thing, but overall I'd like to see what's, what's going on with staff attendance and by building, and, um, and I don't care about their names, I don't care about their names because at some point, at some point, uh, those people should be called to, called, to, uh, called to order, if you will, and they need to be um, cautioned about not being regular in attendance. And progressive discipline needs to take place if you've got some repeaters, okay? People that are actually abusing it, that are sick leave um, ish, policies, whatever the heck that is these days. So that's, that's what I'm talking about, Ms. Moranto. So, you know, needing names, addresses, and phone numbers, no, we don't need that. We don't need that. We just need, and if you, if you see that, when I passed, we got that. We, yeah. You see what we got back. Right. And that, that's pretty general, but what we got here, you guys got this crap. This was just absolutely outrageous. You guys, and you could pass that down, but you all got it. We got it. Joe gave it to us um, at a previous meeting. So, uh, so, those so are you asking for a report like this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, once again, I'll pass it on to you. Well, that's you what have I have to, to do tell this. people that data, people that deal with data all the time, how to present information.
do, do I, as a board member, have to tell people that are supposed to be qualified and, and doing this stuff, do I have to tell people how to prepare and present data? No. I, okay. I mean, come on. No. Okay. You were around when we got the when yeah, we got those yeah. reports. Okay. And, I, and I, I asked for this, and I was told we didn't have anything like this now. This is what they have. Hey, I'm just telling you, don't shoot the messenger. Now that we have a new person in HR, I will speak to him and tell him what the board, the kind of information you're looking for, and I'm sure uh, you'll be able to produce that. So, okay. Right. Okay. We'll do that. All right. I'll bring him this. <sighs> okay. Number two question. Recently, oh, recently we had a special ed employee from Cheney. Uh, expressed her serious concerns about what she viewed as ongoing disservice being perpetrated on those students over there, special ed students over there. For example, special ed students not actively participating in gym classes. But they were sitting on the bleachers while the other kids did whatever they do in gym class. And I've been complaining about special ed, or, well, yeah. I'm not going to say services because we don't service them. Uh, uh, since 2015, uh, things that I personally witnessed um, and which I knew were in violation of state and federal laws. So, um, and, and, and to add insult to injury, I'm the person that called ODE, Office of Exceptional Children, and expressed my concerns. And that's what precipitated I have a state investigation into our special ed um, uh, programs. And those people at ODE saw fit to release us from the, correct, the corrective action plan. After three years, they released us sometime early this year. They said, yeah, you're in compliance, so we're going home. Well, we heard from that, that employee, was that last week or two weeks ago, and she's still saying the same dumb stuff about what, how we are not servicing these special ed children. So I asked him, you know, I'm killing the messenger, Mr. Loranto. Has, has anything been done about her concerns? Have any of her concerns been addressed? And when and how will we know what corrections, if any, have been made before I call Columbus again? I'll see if that's looked into. So you don't know? Okay. No. Well, obviously, nothing could occur over the summer because we don't have kids or school. So, uh, before no, 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 no. But the people responsible are worked in this during the summer. The people that should have been correcting this special ed situation over the last three years have been working. Okay. So, in terms of nobody being around or dragging, no, no, no. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. Because those people should have been called to task and held accountable, and they had needed to have straightened this crap out. I'm not, I'm, you know, we have almost a fourth of our student body is special ed. Almost a thousand kids in Youngstown are special ed. Okay, and and found out part of the problem we found I found out was that some of them were were being were predetermined to be special ed. They didn't even go bother. Our people didn't even bother to do the necessary legal um, evaluations to determine whether those kids were special ed or not. We just had some folks, oh no, you special ed, you're going to special ed classes. So no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in a, in a place, I'm not in a place to accept the fact the school's not in session yet. Because the people responsible should have been, well you said they had PD last week, they should have been PD and all dog on summer, based on this, on the information we we got and I've been receiving over time. So, you know, I'm killing the messenger, Mr. Moranto. I'm killing the messenger. I'll pass it on. Okay. Um, and then um, this question has to do with the budget bill that was passed in the, the uh, uh, state legislature. And there was a lot in it about schools. And one thing that I, and I passed that out to you guys at the last meeting, I think. Um, uh, let's see. There was one thing in there about changing graduation requirements. Right. 
Um, where are we with that? Uh, well, we still haven't received the official uh, you know, documents yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they've changed it a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, actually, though, the changing graduation requirements does not kick in until this year's incoming freshmen will be seniors. By that, with, by that time, they will have a number of ways to receive yeah. their diploma. And that's statewide. It's nothing to do with Youngstown. And, no, it is. Yeah, I know. yeah. So uh, as we get that, we can pass it. But it really doesn't matter because uh, it, it won't take effect until four years, and it doesn't mean four years what they'll do. So. And then right now that. Uh, so right now we go by what the current the law. Current yeah, law is. Yeah. So we're 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 just waiting until. Yeah. Although mm -hmm. we need to, it, you need to know that what what the future is because this coming. Uh, incoming ninth graders need to be aware of yes. their various options. So yes. I'm sure once we, you know, Jackie, we have not even got yet the, the official uh, budget from the state yet. I mean, you know, we've heard uh, based on your enrollment, it would be, could be, we haven't got any official numbers, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the official documents yet. So mm -hmm. once we get that, then I think picture become a little clearer, especially mm -hmm. as graduation requirements. If there's anything we need to be implementing in our system to make sure that our students uh, can avail themselves of these different opportunities to graduate. Mm -hmm. so, but right now, we haven't received anything yet, officially. Okay. Just what you read in the paper. Just what, okay. And then, um, remember, um, you gave a, a presentation a few months back about that new, I forget the name of it, flight? Whatever it was called, that was put in um, at East Ignite. You know, Ignite. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, can we hear something? Not today, but yeah. you know, next meeting maybe. Uh, can we hear something about how that program um, progressed? And, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then um, um, I don't know if this belongs. Yeah, it does. Dress code. Dress code. Um, well, we have a new code of conduct. Mm -hmm. if, if you're, they're not calling it code of conduct, they're calling it code of excellence. But uh, it, it's in draft form. It should be official. Well, obviously, it has to be official this week. The school's going back, yeah. so I will at the next meeting provide you a copy of, of all that. Okay. okay. Or chart because we got new people. So and that yeah, I, and I'll tell Justin. I mean, that's his area, and I'm, yeah, he okay. said he's working on that. Okay. Now, okay. dress code, uh, Joe. Um, uh, you didn't let me finish. Oh, sorry. Not it wasn't about the students, but you've heard you know heard me about that. My concern is about the teaching staff, and what I saw a few months back on television. Uh, one of our teachers had a nose ring, had rainbow colored hair, and she, she had a short sleeve shirt. She was tatted up one side, down the other. What message are we sending to our young people? They can't go to no job interview looking like that. And so, and, and I told, I've mentioned to you guys before about um, um, teachers that I've seen come to school in high top converses. Remember those kind of those of you that are in my age group, the high top converses with the white sole and the black black um, cloth, whatever you know, mm -hmm. those bows. She came to work in those and some, some pedal, what we call pedal pushes, folks. You guys call it, you younger people call it something else. Capris. Who said Capris? You and I know that. You and I know that. Okay. But, but I'm like, okay, really? Really? Come on now. We're having a hard enough time, as African Americans especially, to present ourselves like we should. But when you have teachers that are presenting themselves like, where do you think you going? You can do that after after work. You don't come to work with no ring in your nose. You don't come to work with your rainbow colored hair. Okay? You don't do that because our children need to see the proper way to present themselves. So that was my concern, Joe. What has happened to proper decorum? What has happened to professional looking people? I've taught in the classroom. I never came to work looking like that. Never. Okay. So I'm, that, that was my concern about dress, about dress code, not the students. It was about the staff. 
and, and I, will, I will just tell you this. Okay. That, that the teacher dress code is part of the collecting, collective bargaining agreement uh -huh. between the, the teachers union and, of course, the administration. Uh -huh. uh, currently, our teacher's contract uh, is actually expired almost two years ago now. Yeah. It, it's, and with all the, to be honest, just the confusion in the last few months especially, mm -hmm. uh, no negotiating sessions have taken place. Oh. I'm assuming now mm -hmm. that uh, we have a new CEO in place. And uh, I don't know who he will be using as his uh, legal uh, uh, legal firm, you know. Mm -hmm. But all that has to be determined, and then I'm sure uh, he intends to get those negotiations going. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, surprised the teachers union hasn't pushed a little more for that. But to, to cut to the chase, the teachers dress code is part of the bargaining uh, uh -huh. union agreement. That's not in the so, dress code, Joe. Come on. No strings, rainbow hair. It, it, Jackie. If you don't specifically say you can't do something, then it means you can. So I'm just saying, if it's if the board, I hear what you're saying. Then okay. You pass that on to uh, our our collective bargaining team, the management side, and mm -hmm. raise those issues in negotiations. Has that has has that been challenged? The way the teachers are, are allowed to come to, come to work, looking like. Whatever. To my knowledge, no. Uh huh. So no, no administrator said no, no, no. Come here, you can't wear that. Well, it once again they go by what the what the contract says. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if that's something that, that we think is an issue, then we need to. to you don't think that's an issue? Now you're asking for my personal opinion. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, I, I think we need to dress prof professionally, and we need to be a good role model example to our students. Yes, I agree. I agree. I never saw you wear a nose ring, Joe. No, you won't either. <laughs> That's all. Okay. I, and, I, and I think this is my last one, Madam President. No. Um, curriculum, I'm still hearing from people at Cheney who are talking about Math 3. And again, I asked a while back, what the heck is Math 3? What is that? Just like I asked you about, what is advanced PE? Our curriculum is uh, really tore up from the floor up. What the hell are those, excuse my French, what are those subjects? What are those subjects? And why are we dumbing down our children offering those kinds of off-the-wall courses? And can I, I'm going to just respond. By Go ahead, please. All these things that you said, my, here's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to talk to Mr. Jennings, and it may be, uh, maybe that we may see a change here that maybe he would uh, invite people from the curriculum department to come, special ed department to, you know, then you can address them with your concerns and maybe they can give you uh, a response and uh, maybe that will start a new, but let's hope for a new dialogue where there is actual dialogue between the board and uh, our administrative leadership, but that would be, of course, the CEO's role. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I will talk to him about that yes. and recommend it. Well, in, in terms that of... Might, that, might, that might, you know... Uh, Maybe we'll get to the bottom of some things. Maybe we'll see that, uh, you know, those things can be answered in a better way, more suitable to mm -hmm. you. Well, let me just throw this at you. In terms of curriculum, unless MOHIP changed the policy, which he was allowed to modify board policy, mm -hmm. unless he modified the curriculum policy, the community was supposed to have input and what courses, what curriculum for Youngstown schools was supposed to entail. So just, just to throw that at you, um, that is in, that is in um, HB 70. He can modify curriculum. If he has not modified that particular part of our policy, I mean, he can modify policy. policy, I'm sorry. He can modify policy. If he has not done that, then there better be some community input when, uh, when these folks come up with this crazy stuff. Okay. okay, that's all. And then, um, then my last one, my last one is um, inventory. And I've asked about this before. We don't have this. Have we just decided to get an inventory control policy? Because I'm hearing about equipment just walking out of buildings and people taking stuff, employees taking stuff home, never to be seen again. And, um, and we got dinged, we got dinged in the audit about inventory control, 
the state audit. And so, um, so do you have a response to that? No, I'll look into it. Okay, that's it, Madam President. Thank you. Have the records show that Mr. Hunter uh, came into the meeting at 4.42 and Mr. Murphy at 5.01. Okay. I, I had a question, some things um, from what Jackie just said. So the graduation, um, the ways to graduate will stay as they have been for the last one or two years. The 10 ways to graduate, that stays in place? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, what was that, Madam President? You know, that they, they created like 10 different ways you could graduate. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is that will stay in place until this new, new thing. Okay. thing comes up. Okay. And as far as dress code, so there won't be uniforms, right? No. Okay. And then, Not this year. Okay. I, I have one concern if a teacher's walking around with rainbow hair because I know of at least three occasions where students were denied to be on the volleyball team girls because they had colored hair. Oh. So how in the world can you deny a student if the teachers are walking around with rainbow color hair? Now, I didn't see this teacher, so. It was on TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She yeah. says left the district, though. Oh, she did? Okay. I mean, not that that matters, but not because of her hair. She needed to. Okay. And then who is our she in charge of records? you have a name for that? Yeah, Thomas Hill. Other questions? Or yeah, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Ranchwell, I wanted to know, can't hear you. Question. The warehouse, as far as the books, are, the last time I talked to a couple of administrators, as far as the warehouse, there were thousands of books, brand new books, that wasn't being utilized. And teachers were still in need of books. And with, uh, from my understanding, Classrooms have new up to date as far as like equipment and also too with their books that they're going to need for the beginning of the school year. I'm going to say yeah, but I'll double check mm -hmm. with him tomorrow. Okay, that's great. Any other questions for the superintendent? Mm -hmm. Start with board members' comments. Five minutes, Mr. Murphy. Uh, no comment tonight. Mr. Bekovich? I will not be coming tonight. I'll make a comment after the next. Um, financial um, committee meeting. When is that meeting? That meeting is <laughs> scheduled for August the 27th. Mm -hmm. And that's the same night as our school board meeting. Oh, nice. <laughs> what time is your meeting? Uh, it's supposed to be at 4 p.m. Where's that going to be held at? East. The library? Um, no, probably in the vault. The vault. We'll be back on regular time then, right? The school will be back. Yeah, the next back. meeting should be back. The next meeting should be back. Oh, the will be at 5.30 p.m. on phone hours. Okay. Okay, Ms. Adier. Um, I don't have much to much to offer um, other than uh, you know my concerns about our finance uh, situation and um, all of the negative uh, PR that was presented presented in the vindicator <coughs> about the fact that the board we bumbled uh, the levy issue oh, yeah. and well I know but that's what he wrote oh. okay and. Um, and without, and without um, having a fair and balanced newspaper, uh, of course, only one side of the story got presented, and that was, you know, we bumbled that. We had, you know, we waited till the last minute and on and on and on to try to get that taken care of, blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, so other than that, um, uh, all the negatives that have been written in that paper, and I did send some of you my responses to some of the negative stuff that um, one of those uh, the editorial staff, several of those editorial uh, uh, writings, slammed us for stuff that we didn't belong to us. They belonged to the CEO, the former CEO. And so I did write, I have written, but not, not um, 
uh, letters to the editor about their one-sided presentation of what goes on at Youngstown City School mm -hmm. schools and uh, at our board meetings. I even said, well, none of you have ever been to a meeting. So how do you know what we say? Okay. The one person especially has never been here. Okay. And mm -hmm. some of their reporters have. And, um, and then even after they've come, they still twist it and turn what happens in our board meetings. So I am I'm very much um, concerned. Uh, we did vote to change um, our, where we have our, um, our information about board meetings presented um, in the print media. We, we voted, what, two meetings ago or something like that, I don't know, um, to use the Warren Tribune and the Business Journal. And I can hardly wait. I don't know when that's going to take place, but I can hardly wait because I've just about, I've had about enough of that vindicator and their unfair and unbalanced reporting about what goes on in our district, what goes on with the board, okay? Um, and somehow, like I said, we're, you know, if we step on a crack, they make a big deal out of it, but somehow or another, the previous administration was the next best thing since ice cream. And I did also send, send you guys, um, I think I did, um, an article, an article that appeared in a Colorado paper that I felt very much, very explicitly, they got it right. The writer of that article got it right about what happened, what has happened here in Youngstown over the, the Youngstown schools over the last three years or so. Under state control, being led here locally by the former CEO, Chris Mohi. So um, we, you know, we do have, we do need to talk uh, about our finances. And I'm pleased to understand. I'm pleased to know because I was kind of confused. What was the hurry about that levy? But um, I'm pleased to now understand that we are not. There, there was no need to rush that because that money won't dry up until 2021. The five million plus dollars that our tax pro uh, property taxes generate won't dry up until 2021. So we have plenty of time, fellow board members, to take a long, hard look and an analytical look at our finances, and um, and so we can determine um, whether or not, you know, what what why do we need? What's the reason for the levies staying on the on the uh, on the books? Nobody has, nobody has told us, be it Mr. Gennetti or the, the previous CEO and, and or the current CEO, why do they need this money? And if it's, if it's to keep paying for these $100,000 people, I don't think so. And if you, if you guys read the last um, article, I think it was the last article that Mr. Meacham, um, th that he put in the paper, um, and he put some charts, he put a spreadsheet in the, in the paper a few days ago that showed our, the city's median income has dropped from what I thought it was, what I've been saying over time. I've been telling everybody it was 24000 But according to Mr. Meacham, it's now in $20,000. $20,000 is our, our district's median income. But yet, can we afford to be paying folks hundreds of thousands of dollars? And so we do have to have, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not going to approve putting a levy on the ballot until, and that's a big until, and unless we get some definitive documentation as to why we need, uh, need that money. Is my five minutes? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Hannon? Yes. Um, I'd just like to thank my colleagues for the issues they raised, particularly Ms. Adair. Uh, the issues that she's raised go to the heart of what our job is as school board members, and it takes a little bit of the time that I would otherwise have to spend discussing all of the many problems this district faces, but I will raise some issues she hasn't raised. I do feel that even though the Vindy's coverage of the levy vote was definitely one-sided and relatively fact-free, especially since no one was here covering that vote from the Vindicator. 
I do also feel that if the board felt it needed to make a decision in time to be on the ballot by the recent deadline, meetings should have been held in an organized and staggered fashion well in advance, and we were aware of the need to do so. So we had months to make that happen. It's been a rather haphazard pattern of dealing with meetings and the board's business lately. It's been over the course of a number of months. And it's very problematic. It's not a good look. It's not professional on the board's part. And a lot of it is occasioned by decisions made, unfortunately, by board leadership. Board leadership decides that this meeting's going to be canceled, this meeting's going to be moved. And frankly, that's something that doesn't bode well for not just getting business done on the part of the board, but for full participation. And there's members of this board that work and have very tight schedules and have conversations with other members of the board about that. So I think we really need to do some soul searching as a group and work more collaboratively as, as a team to make sure we're all on board with an organized strategy for dealing with the issues that this board has to tackle. I don't see that happening, including the most recent agenda review, which somehow fell through. And I don't understand why that was the case. That should have worked out. Now, I want to bring up a bigger issue. I want to bring up the issue of 400 years of slavery and discrimination and Jim Crow and the anniversary of that in this country and the fact that we sit on a board that represents a city that has been massively disenfranchised in one of the most elemental basic services the government provides, which is education. And I want to bring up a quote, a very, very well-known quote that I think is relevant here. People will never give you the education you need to overthrow them. Mm -hmm. Our district has been systematically missed and undereducated and is a part of the pattern of the abuses that have taken place in this country over 400 years, this overwhelmingly African-American district. And these contractors that come in over this state takeover have been monetizing our children's failure for a very, very long time. Now, we have a new CEO. We're in this very interesting moment in time. And my approach has always been to follow that quote from Frederick Douglass. I will unite with anyone to do right and no one to do wrong. So I'm going to talk to him. And I'm going to hope to work with him for the benefit of our children. At the same time, we know what this regime is about, we know what it has to offer, and I'm going to remain vigilant on behalf of the people that elected me to serve on this board and serve their best interests. And that brings me to the issue of this boarding school that's proposed. Multiple members of this board have spoken out against this. It's basically shortening the school to prison pipeline. They want to cut out the middleman and bring the prison right to the school. It's basically just another way to monetize and make profit off our children. And they did not consult the community. They did not consult the neighborhood it's supposed to go in. They didn't consult anybody on this board, the people who were elected to represent this city in educational affairs. They had a whole backdoor cabal the same way they did with the Youngstown plan. And then they want to come out of those backroom conversations and say that they're serving the best interest of the public and our children. When you want to serve the best interest of the public and our children, you give the public, the community, parents, taxpayers, and those children a say over the future educationally of this city. They deserve no less. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I just want to make a comment about something that Mr. Hunter mentioned about the meetings and there being some issues with their um, with scheduling and stuff like that over the last couple of months. Over the last couple of months, myself, the president, uh, Ms. Sebekovich, have been going back and forth with Columbus <coughs> to fight for our district to overturn HB 70. And a lot of those meetings that they were setting up down in Columbus, they weren't giving us any, any notice or any time in, in advance to say this is going to happen. The, they, wanted to hide, they wanted to make these hearings happen as quickly as possible without any response from our community. And the, the, the piece I would want people to take away from this is that this fight is not over as far as the issue of HB 70. And even though the state senate couldn't make up its mind to carry through with what everyone believes is a bad plan, HB 70, the fight is still on there. We still have a lawsuit. We still need to be going back to Columbus and making these uh, the senate, the state senators, and all legisl all the legislators in Columbus know that we're not going to back down because of, of, of this uh, of, of their of them not wanting to take action. So. Um, yeah, I will admit it was it was tough. It was a lot of this disruption to our regular patterns of our meetings, but it was necessary to have that disruption in order for us to have a voice down in Columbus. And from that, from our from from us 
talking and being activated on this particular issue. There's a lot of other issues that, that still are that, that are still uh, taking place under HB 70. How is it is to me? It's an unfair labor practice that our that our um, our union is going without having a contract, and that and that's crazy. I don't even know how, how that happens. The the other issue is that you know if you don't have a contract, we're lucky these people haven't strike. She haven't strike yet. You know, and, and they and they need to be at the table correcting this uh, situation here. Um, as far as what our schools uh, system. The, the, it sounds like Mr. Moranto wants to give us some reports and things like that. More or less, what I would like to see Mr. Moranto is that Mr. Jennings had gave us a report early on about the, the 93.5 vacancies that we had in the district. And I would like to know, have those vacancies been filled? Will, how many vacancies remain? What is the structure of our, of our um, district, of, of our district buildings for the upcoming school year? You know, and are, and are those positions being filled? And um, the, 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 the funding with the state. The issue with, this, with Ohio is that it's been deemed unconstitutional how schools are funded. That's been over 20 years that that decision has been made by the state Supreme Court. But they have yet to change it. You know, these are the things we need to get mobilized and start talking to Columbus about. If the state, if the state, if the state <laughs> uh, has said that it's, un if the state uh, Supreme Court has said it's unconstitutional, how, how the funding is happening in the state. Why isn't everybody up in arms? How did that conversation die after 20 years of being viewed as something that was unjust and unconstitutional in Ohio? And why isn't every newspaper talking about that every day until that's changed? So, I mean, it's important that we do get a levy on, 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 on the books. And my, my, I thought the urgency was there just because we don't know what the next structure of the board is going to look like. And that those people are going to viewed as essential that that let me be on the ballot. However, um, I will say for myself, I was I was ill, and I did what I could do. I mean, hey, I, I fought the fight, and it was to the point where my family was like, hey, you need to go to the hospital, you know, because the levy can't be placed on the ballot another day. And so I, I made that personal decision for my well-being and health, and my family's peace of mind. Uh, but um, I will say that there is a lot of restructuring and shaping that needs to take place in this district to ensure that whatever funding comes in here is used appropriately and an increased spending is spent in the classroom. That's all. Ms. Anderson? Uh, yes. Um, I just wanted to address as far as like um, the meetings as well too. I know a couple of our board members have touched on it, but um, I would like for us to really think about being organized and being considered of all board members, um, whether they're on vacation or whether they work. I know I personally change my schedule at work so I can be off every Tuesday uh, for our meetings. And I know that we had to go down to Columbus to fight, but I know like three meetings in a row right after I was able to get my job to change my schedule were ended up being canceled when we still could have had a forum um, to conduct regular uh, business. So as far as like with the levy, we should have been discussing this a long time ago. It's got pushed back, got pushed back. I know, to be honest with you, Ralph Meacham understands our finances more than our own treasurer. And he had an opportunity, he came to a community meeting that I held at St. Christine's, and he gave a breakdown of our money, where is it being spent, and the outlook. And that could have been explained to us of, you know, it does not necessarily have to be done now. Um, but it does look bad. A lot of people that's not here at the meetings, they don't know, they're not privy to the uh, understanding why, but it does look bad when we have three back-to-back -back special meetings just on a resolution for a letter. So I, I would appreciate it, you know, if we work together as far as like scheduling, so the public is able to be there, because most people, they work nine to five. Um, in addition to that, even when it comes to our board meetings and the agenda, you know, for the agenda review, is that we work with everyone's schedule, so we can have something actually on the agenda, um, because we have, there's other ideas that need to be shared from all board members, and it's, it's not being placed on here, because it's not convenient for everyone. So I'll work with you, if, um, Saturday, Sundays, I don't care if it's a special meeting on those days, it's just I can't do special meetings during work hours. 
first of all, I want to say for every <coughs> that was canceled, we did not have a quorum, and that's why it had to be canceled. Okay? Yeah, we did not have a quorum, and that's why we were canceled. Okay? Four, four of us quorum. couldn't be there? Four of us couldn't be there. That's why it was canceled. Now, if you want to go back and look up the dates and ask questions, you're know, welcome to do that. Mm -hmm. But we did not have a quorum, is why they were canceled. Secondly, the meetings are at 5.30 in the uh, fall and 4.30 through the summer, and that's what we voted on. So um, that's where it is. As far as agenda review, I've um, asked Mr. A.J. Janetti to send out a list because he's supposed to be doing the work for the board, and so he said he would get a list sent out, but usually agenda review is at 5 or earlier. Um, uh, if people, would, the folks that are attending would like it to be earlier and they're able to come to those meetings. I just wanted to say my concern is, I don't know if this is on or not, but my concern is um, it's just been weighing heavy on my mind is the fact that the ADC Commission says that they want to work with the board because I don't think people understand House Bill 70 and how severe it is and that it can eventually be lead to chartering out our whole school district and the mayor selecting five members that are given to him um, out of 10 people from the state school superintendent who selects a committee to choose those names. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, while we were there testifying, Marie Hoffmaster from the Academic Distress Commission testified two times, I would say against this board, to keep House Bill 70 in place because she felt it was working and there was a lot of groundwork that had been laid that she didn't want us to lose this school year uh, with these changes. We had our CEO, Mr. Jennings, write a, um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. a letter saying that this is working so it should stay in place. Okay, and I don't think that they understand again that they went down to Columbus, or he didn't go, he wrote a letter, Mr. Jim. But when they said these things, I don't think they, they truly understand House Bill 70. I think that everybody has their own personal reasons for wanting this in place. Mm -hmm. uh, because you don't only deal with Youngstown City Schools and public education. This affects public education all over the total state of Ohio that our district could possibly be charted out because of this. Now, Ms. Hoffmaster wants us to work with her and this ABC, but I don't know what groundwork was laid out because the board was never given any information on this groundwork that was laid out that she didn't want to lose. But what happens if this doesn't work? Because under Mr. Mohead, clearly we have went backwards. Because she went up there and testified, and I think they took her testimony very seriously because she's part of the ABC, uh, that this should stay in place, we could lose our total district. And I just think they're unaware of how dangerous this law is. And with the CEO, and I have nothing personal against him, I don't know him. And he didn't know what was going on in our district, and I don't know if he clearly understood House Bill 70 to say that it was working because he hadn't been here in the district to understand or to know what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just don't understand how these folks want us to work with them because if there was groundwork that was actually laid, that groundwork could have stayed in place without this complete and total control over our district pulling away the authority of the elected <coughs> board members. Uh, so that's kind of upsetting to me. And I wanted to say about the levy, the levy was discussed for about a year and a half. We didn't come down to meetings and resolutions until this last couple of weeks. But the levy, we've been discussing that when we were over at Chauffeur Career Center having meetings. So it wasn't something that was not discussed and then it was pushed. I just, you know, I just hope that we can all work together for what's best for our children because already, and I'll say over and over, we've lost so much ground under the leadership of Mr. Mohia, who's walked away and I guess he's doing whatever he wants to do, but we're, we're left stuck and hopefully we can work together and pull our children out of this situation that they've been placed in um, under this leadership with uh, a lack of funds, 
because we know that almost $13 million or more or less was spent in the past, well, it was that $11 million that I don't know if ever was accounted for. No, it wasn't spent. Right, I said less. Oh, less. Said less spent in the classroom. So I, I just want what's best for our children. I don't know how that's going to happen. But I guess we'll just need to work together and see. Hopefully we can get some reports. Some of the administrators coming in to give us some reports. Mr. Moreto, I think you mentioned that. Yeah, so I'm going to ask Mr. Jennings right, to do that. So that we're aware of what's happening. This is our school district. And regardless of how long we have to sit here, because we don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. uh, in 20 mm -hmm. with this board. Uh, we have to remember there was a one-year moratorium placed, mm -hmm. uh, but that's for school districts that are not in academic distress. You have to know East Cleveland is in distress with only one <coughs> fell in school, but they just fell in, so they have time. And Lorraine has <coughs> more time than we have, so what it appears to me is if this continues, Youngstown City School District is the only district that will be caught into this net and could possibly be charted out. And I think that's what they want from the beginning, and I believe that's why House Bill 166 was pulled, and they said that they would work on it, and um, it's, just, it's just bad. So for Ms. Hoffmaster to go down there twice, I don't appreciate it, and testify against this district. I don't know where Ms. Hoffmaster lives. I don't know if she's ever had children in the district or went to the district. I'm not gonna, I don't know her knowledge about the district, but I know the House Bill 70 is not the best thing for this district, and I just, wish she hadn't have testified to say that it should stay in place because again, that groundwork, whatever it was that was laid, again, if this board has no knowledge of because we're not given information, could have stayed in place, I'm sure, without House Bill 70 staying in place. Thank you. Madam President, um, since you mentioned um, the, I was gonna bring this, this up under unfinished business, so if you want me to wait out uh, for that point. But you talked about collaborating or not with ABC in your in your presentation, and um, if you know, I, I'd like to comment here um, that you know, everything you say is true. Um, she's looking at what she thinks is the best <coughs> idea for what she knows. Uh, Mr. Jennings uh, is looking. I'm thinking. Uh, I, I'm looking at him as this is a personal thing because he's. He's going to be making about two hundred thousand um, dollars a year, if uh, uh, as long as HB seventy is in control. And so there's some very personal reasons I believe that they, you know, that they did what they did. But the fact still remains is that until and unless HB seventy is thrown out, we have what we have, and that's the commission. And if they want to know, and I said this before. If they want to collaborate and talk with us through either the commission itself or, or even through Mr. Jennings, I am perfectly willing to do, to, to do that. We can't keep doing what we did. We can't keep doing what we did with Mohia. Nothing. Okay. Uh, and we can't keep waiting on Mr. Moranto to go run back and ask, uh, well, what about this and what about that? Not getting any answers to anything. Because we have not, you know, I don't know about you, but I've not been able to make an informed decision or make, um, tell my community anything, give them any uh, factual information about what has gone on in this district. Because we've not gotten any information, and Mr. Moe have sought to it, that we didn't. And so if this is the only way that we're going to be able to help them, the commission and Mr. Jennings, get us out of this this bad situation that we find ourselves in, thank you, Mr. Mohia, then I am all for uh, collaborating with them. Yeah, thank you. Okay. You know what, and that's fine. I don't have any problem with that either. But I'm going to say this. That same commission that sits there now saying they want to collaborate mm -hmm. was the same commission that sat there when they could have stopped Mr. Mohia from, from, some, from some of the damage that he did to this district and they refused to do it because they said that they didn't have the power, the power. to yeah. release him, although the law says mm -hmm. he works at the pleasure of the commission. I think it's on the next to the last page of that law. Mm -hmm. So they could have released him, but instead, what did they say? We went to him then. Oh, we can't tell him 
who to hire, or we can't tell, we know that this isn't right, but we can't tell him that you know what to do, or we can't stop him from doing that. You could even sit down and advise him, hey, you're working for us, this doesn't look right to us, you need to make some changes, or something has to happen. None of that happened. They allowed this to roll on, and then I, I was thinking about it just now. Mm -hmm. I remember he testified and he said, this is Mr. Monia, I believe mm -hmm. May 29th. Mm -hmm. And he made the comment that he and the CEO from Lorraine didn't have to be in these areas. They could go anywhere across this country and get a job. And I was just thinking, does he think people does not read the paper? Because you've been all over the country and you couldn't get a job. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's all. Madam mm President. -hmm. Again, you know, um, I know, and I, I, you probably do too, that the, the original commission that hired Mohib did have issues with him, but they took their concerns to where the power lies, and that's with the state superintendent, Paolo DeMario. And Paolo is the person who said, oh, no, you know. And so as a result of that, Remember, three of those people quit. Yes. So, you know, so, and I'm just throwing that out there. That's true. But, and, and of course, I've also been told that Mr. Mohip was not one that, that the following commission, the one I guess it's seated now, um, no, no, the Binyo Commission, they could, he just wasn't hearing it. Whatever they tried to say and advise him of, he was not here and he was going to do it his way. And so you see what we got. So I'm, you know, I'm just saying that, okay, I know all of what you said. I know and I've heard from other board members as well about, about how they feel about commissions. And hey, I felt about commissions since they first came in the district in 2010, okay? Um, but it is what it is, folks, and we, can, you know, we can't keep bumping our heads up against the wall. And you, you've heard me say this, you keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result. My opinion is not that insanity is stupid, okay? So we have to, this is, this is a, an opening. This is an opening, and if, if we can work with them, the commission and Mr. Jennings, this school year, we may be able to pull our fat out of the fire. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm hoping that we may be able to help that commission do what those experts are supposed to do, and that's to bring our academic condition here in this, in this school district from a failure to at least a D or a C. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, are we in unfinished business now? Unfinished business. Okay. So I would like to make a motion that the board commit to meeting having joint meetings with the ADC as special meetings once a month. Can I get a second on that? Second. I guess we're in discussion? Correct, Madam President? Discussion. Are we in discussion? discussion. Okay, Madam President, if I may, mm -hmm. I'd like to explain my motion. We had uh, Dr. Hoffmaster here wow. discussing this issue of meeting with the board on a regular basis. Her idea, as she presented it, was us sharing our meetings every meeting. I don't agree with that. We have to have our own meetings and conduct our own business. I agree, however, with the spirit <coughs> that she expressed and what Ms. Adair expressed. We have some definite differences with the ADC. We definitely have some disagreement with how the ADC came into existence. I have expressed that on numerous occasions. However, I think we should talk with them. And I think sometimes the people you have disagreements with are the first people you want to talk to. We need to have regular communication. We need to have regular sharing of information. And personally, I think the best way to do that is through special meetings on a regular basis. And hopefully, by gaining information and connecting with the ADC through those meetings, it will help fuel the business we do in our regular meetings from month to month. So that's the spirit in which this motion is. Thank you, Madam President. Any other discussion? I like the motion that we table that until um, we don't we don't know what the schedule is for a commission. We don't know when they're going to meet, and I would like to know more about what reports they're going to offer. 
or be given from the CEO before we talk about a joint meeting? Because my, my thoughts are, first of all, what is the role of the, of the Academic Distress Commission? It's to hire, fire, and they do one evaluation if they do that. Um, so I want to know more about when they're going to rep, when they're going to meet, what information they're going to get at their meetings, and then what we can what we can ascertain would be the best direction to go once that information has been given to us. I'd like to know the framework of the meeting. Who's going to run the meeting? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be our meeting? <coughs> Is it going to be their meeting? Is it a joint meeting? Who's going to keep the minutes? Who's going to run the meetings? Who's going to bring us the information? <coughs> Madam President, so not just guarantee that we're going to meet once a month and know nothing about it. Madam President, if I may, a couple of points. Nothing in the motion specified a specific time. It was a commitment to the idea of meeting once a month, whenever that date might be upon mutual agreement. When Dr. Hoffmaster was here, she actually specified that she would like to see something from the board, some kind of step indicating that we're on board with the idea of having those collaborative meetings. That would be what this is. And as to Mr. I, as to this point of order, because there's a motion to table this, uh, your, your, your motion. I think that was well, a, we need a second on that. Uh, Mr. Murphy went straight into discussion. So, yeah, I understand um, that, but we, but there's a motion. And you and would no recognize second. that. A, so we need a, I, I would ask that, is there a second to table? Second. Okay. Yes. So if I may, Madam President. So and therefore, to, this table, there's no discussion. No, there's no vote. There's the no next vote. thing is to discuss. So this is discussion. Next. We're next thing we discuss. Sure, motion. It's been tabled. No. No. We made a motion. You got to vote on it. You have to vote. We're in a discussion period. No. You motion. He second. second. We're now the discussion. I on your motion. To table it. There's no. There's no debate about a, about a table motion. Yes. Find it and show me where. There's no. I forgot. Let me let me sit by and find that one. And I think that was that motion was out of order. Anyway. Okay. Give me one second. Kimball? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Adair? No. Savekovic? Yes. Hunter? No. Sanderson? No. Shad? Yes. The motion the motion to table this to, to table the motion uh, passes four to three. Madam President, if I may. Yes, sir. I would like to move to take it from the table. Do I get a second? Yes, second. Okay. So, Discussion. Thank you. Yeah. This is an issue. On. This is an issue that unfortunately has been tabled already. We had a meeting when we discussed this, and we said we're going to have a discussion, and we'll decide <coughs> upon it on a future date. Mm -hmm. This is a future date. How many times are we going to table this? How many times are we going to drop the ball in terms of having communication with those who are actually in power, unfortunately, over the education of our children? Now, I don't agree with what they're doing. I don't agree with the system that put them in place. But for us to just stick our head in the sand, and then at the same time say we're not getting information, is absolutely ludicrous and ridiculous. Now, they want to talk with us. The whole regime that put them in place is bogus, but the information behind what they're doing is important to us because this board has been making decisions in the dark for too long and then wondering why it's in the dark. We should be meeting, we should be discussing, we should put the chip on our shoulder aside for as long as it takes to actually collect some information to do good, to do right by the children in this district, and some of the people on this board just need to get over themselves. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, Mrs. Sanderson. I think as we're supposed to represent the public and it's not about our hurt feelings. We need to be getting the information. We need to be working with them. I want when this transition take place, when them to pass that torch back over, we be well informed. We need to look at what the public wants. I have spoken to people in the community. They want us to work mm -hmm. with the commission. Mm -hmm. They want us to work with the CEO. And what it seems like is that we're making it personal instead of it being about, our, about the children or what the community wants and trying to see what the future will lie. I don't see the problem. I don't see the harm that we cause. This is just a draft. 
of what will be look, it'll look like as far as a schedule. Um, as far as like the details being worked out, we can always do that because we you know, do have work sessions. So there's no problem with us just passing it to say in the future we would like to meet with you monthly to, to talk. I don't see the harm. Any other discussions? Yeah, Mr. President, Jennings, Mr. Jennings told me that he'll give us all the information we want. Anything he we us, want. He told you. He told me that. Yeah. He told he you. He told me. Well, Mr. Well, we before us. Well, we met us. With the ABC I'm sorry. Yes. When we met with them out there, he pulled me aside and said he'll give us all the information and make sure we get all the information we want. Mm -hmm. So we've got to give him a chance to do that. Okay, so how's this not giving him a chance? How is that not giving him a chance? It's not. I mean, we've got to give him a chance. That's what I'm worried I want him to bring us the information. Oh. You don't want to get it from the commission. I want so. to get it from him. He okay. said he'd do that. Okay. So I want him to let everyone come in and give us information. Madam President, excuse me for interrupting. Um, however, uh, this is, um, we've been going back and forth about these commissions for quite a, quite a number of years. And as I've stated over and over, and many other people on the board have stated over and over, at one point, they refused to tell us anything. That Binyo Commission refused to tell us, meet, even refused to meet with us. Based on what you've shared with us, Madam President, you asked him, and he said no. And so, now, now we have a, a foot in the door, we have an opening. And I, you know, I have to agree with Ms. Sanderson, this is not personal. This should not be about hurt feelings and and Hoffmaster went and stated her case and blah, blah, blah. What did you expect her to say? And, and again, what did you expect Mr. Jennings to say? He's going to make $200,000 here. So why would he say, no, do, no, no. Do away with HB 70. I mean, that's the common sense. But right now, it is what it is, and we have to be the bigger persons. And all the details that everybody's asking about, we can work on that. But right now, it's just the issue of meet, agreeing to meet and collaborate with them. And then we can get together and work out the details. Who's on first? Who's going to chair the meeting? Who's going to blah, blah, blah? We can do that. We can do that. Okay? But, not, but right now, it's just a matter of do we, should we or should we not meet and collaborate with the commission? Should we or should we not? As a matter of fact, folks, when did, in, in, with previous commissions, did any of them come to our meetings? We've had Nick here a couple times. Ms. Hoffmaster came a couple times. Even Mr. Jennings would be here today, but he's got another commitment. Mohit blew us off and told us to go fly kite. We haven't seen him in two years or better. Okay, so I, I, you know, this is not about me. It is not about me. I don't hope it ain't about any of you guys. This is about what's best for the children in this school district. And we have not had any authority, we have not had an impact on anything that's taken place in our district since, um, what was that, 2016 when Mohib stepped foot, set foot on, on the premises. So this is an opportunity. They need to hear from those of us who live in this city. I've got children in my neighborhood who go to Youngstown schools. So I'm sure some of you do too. I've got people that that are, are telling me, heck no, I'm not bringing my, I'm not enrolling my kids in Youngstown City Schools. <laughs> what? Okay. So we have to do something to recoup those students we have lost. We have to do something to improve the academic condition of the children in this city. And until and unless we do, and we don't have the authority to say or do anything about it, until and unless we do, Youngstown City is going to go down the tubes. Okay. Youngstown City is on the verge of financial crisis, it's doggone so. Well, what is that about? Because we don't have enough people living in this city working. And working people need to be educated people. That's our responsibility. And whatever we have to do, just, just shy of doing something illegal, we need to do it, folks. And that, in my opinion, means collaborating with, uh, with the Academic Distress Commission. Thank you, yes, Madam President. To the President, please. Mr. Shaham. Um, no one said that we, don't, we do not want to collaborate with the commission. No one is talking about her feelings because, I mean, the, the issue is this, is that CEO Jennings said that he would meet with us. From my understanding, the commission is only going to be supposed to be meeting like once every other month. So my thoughts are, 
until we can get a grasp from him about when he's going to meet with us and what that meeting is going to look like, why would we trouble the commission if we're working directly with the CEO? That, that's, that's, that's the piece there. And the, and the commission is only going to meet once a month, how, once every other month. How can they directly answer or, or answer questions that we may have when they may be a month behind us? So if the, if the CEO himself said that he is going to work with us, then let's work on the structure of working directly with the CEO. Madam President, if I may, what you're in effect telling the public is that we can't walk and chew down at the same time. That you can't meet with the CEO and get information from the CEO and also meet with the ABC. Which, by the way, Ms. Hallmaster came here and Dr. Hallmaster came here and said we would like to collaborate with you with each of your meetings. So this is dialed down from what she came here and said. So the schedule that you put up, Mr. Shell, with all due respect, doesn't mess with what you came and presented. We can walk and chew down at the same time, and if you can't, then you really shouldn't be on this board if you can't take information from this source and that source and the other source and make reasonable decisions for the future of our children. We are talking right now about taking this off the table. We're not even just discussing a straight vote on it. And to me, the fact that we have to find ourselves in discussion over whether we are actually going to vote on this illustrates the ultimate dysfunction behind this board. It's cowardly. You should at least decide that you're going to make a decision. And this is something that comes right on the heels of the ridiculousness of the lead up to that levy vote where we could have made a decision months before, but we're making a decision an hour before the deadline with the board of elections. All this is a bad look to a community where we're trying to make the argument that the board should have the power to make decisions over the educational future of our children. Well, if you believe that, act like it. So vote for this motion to take this off the table and make a straight decision and stand by that decision so the public that elected you knows where you stand on collaborating with, getting information from, and making reasoned, well-reasoned decisions for the future of our children. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President. All right, um, So the ATC's next meeting is this Friday at 10 a.m. They're going to be meeting at the Chauvin Career Center. Um, I unfortunately will not be able to attend that meeting. I will be in Columbus. Um, I then have a meeting with the Finance Committee later on this month. I too feel as though Mr. Jennings needs to be given the opportunity to follow through on what he has promised to multiple members of this board. That he is going to be bringing us the information. He is going to be attending these meetings. He is going to make sure that we are informed. Let's give him the chance to do what he said he was going to do before we go and start meeting with the ADC. That's all I have. Okay, I'm going to call roll call. Want to state your motion, uh, Mr. Hunter. The motion is to lay back on the table the original motion that was tabled, and that original motion was for us to have joint meetings with the ADC as special meetings once a month. So you will be voting to lay that back on the table so that we can then actually vote on it. That's how ridiculous this has all gotten. That's where we're at. <coughs> it's not ridiculous. It I just is. actually state the motion. So and I did, Madam President. I stated, I stated the clarity on how ridiculous we are ridiculous. at the board. Yes, Madam Thank President. You. Thank Roll you. Call. Ms. Kimball. No. Mr. Murphy. No. Mrs. Adair. Yes. Mr. Sebekovich. No. Mr. Hunter. Yes. Ms. Sanderson. Yes. Mr. Shad, no. Madam President, question. Um, this, this issue is not a dead issue, and so it will be coming up again. Uh, that's fine. So, okay. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Madam President. You're welcome. Uh, new business. Ms. Sanderson wanted, and I mentioned this before she came uh, on to the uh, agenda today to. Uh, have travel approved to go to Miami, Florida for the NSBA Q conference in September. I did speak to Mr. Janetti about this, but he would like a cost first to bring that through with the resolution to vote on you going to that conference. Uh, Madam President, doesn't he do the research on that to look up the travel? Listen, I don't know what he does, but he, he wants a cost, so you need to discuss that 
with him. But that's why it's not on here. I just wanted you to know I didn't forget it. Yeah. He needs a car. So as you know, I haven't traveled this year. So that should be $2,500 that I should have. So it should be well, an for, you know, amount. He did, he, again, he said he needed a cost. And I guess he means how much the conference is going to cost, mm -hmm. the room, and the airfare. That's what so, Yeah. No, that's exactly what that's what you got to do is meet with a builder. Yeah. Uh, all oh, no, that is not the board's responsibility. It's, it, it's, it, it's his responsibility, but again, he needs a cost. So if she's going to travel, all she has to do is meet with him, and they can look it up, or she can pull. You know, we don't have anybody working for us, and he's supposed to do all this, and maybe he doesn't clearly understand how or what, but There's he just needs a cost for it. He needs a cost for it. I know that you have two thousand dollars is what we have, and then we have that extra. But if the whole trip doesn't cost two thousand, <laughs> so that's what he's just wanting to cost. So I would say call him and meet with him ASAP so you get a decent price for an airfare. Madam President, for Miss Carla and Vicky did all of that. Before her, what's her face, Kathy, did all of that. Right. They handled all of the travel. You just let them know what, who, what, where, why, and they did all of that. So, not, and I've asked who's who's doing the job that Carla was was doing. And he said he, he was well, okay. Then he should do it. Right. He so that's why it. I'm telling her to meet with him. Tell him where you want to go. Right. I, I, I assume conference. she did that. No, she didn't no. do that. Okay, so when is it your side? Uh, I said that do? for it was supposed to be for agenda review, mm -hmm. but because I get off at six o'clock, I can't go to agenda review. So I was asked what I want on there, and it was a resolution for the NSBAQ. And um, so I was told, I guess just I got to do the cool. research. No, you don't have to research. Well, that's what she just call them and tell me where you want to go, and you'll do it. Because she did meet with you, met with him yesterday. I told him. Uh -huh. and so said, now he wants me to do the travel plans, like the, a travel agent, and then get back to him. You're going to tell him the dates you're going and stuff. Oh, I, I gave him dates and things, but he needs a cost. So you just need to meet with him. I mean, you can okay. have him sit there and pull it up. You don't have to pull it up, but you need to meet with him. So we can get a pass. Are we, in, are we in new business, Madam President? Yeah, Still unfinished business? New. Okay. Um, who's, who's responsible for contacting the Warren Tribune and the Business Journal? Gotta have someone do that. I, I, I called them even before this vote was taken uh -huh. uh, to talk about. When I, when I heard the indicator was going to close the same day, mm -hmm. and they told me like this, they said they don't know yet if they're going to add anybody else to their crew. Okay. Uh, but we could call them, and so I guess that would be a treasure to give them meeting dates and things like that. Or not our treasure, but Denise didn't <coughs> call them before okay. to put any information into the newspaper. They said they would have to have a meeting and decide if they were going to put anybody else on because that would be more costly to them. So they didn't know if they okay. would have anybody that could actually come to the meeting, okay. but they would at least put our notices out for oh, us. Okay. So we would just go through Miss Dick like we have, okay. and unless they replace her. And I don't know if that's her. And um, next question. We voted um, to the last uh, tax abatement request that we got. We, we voted no. And so there was supposed to be a letter. Uh, where is it? Who wrote it? I'd like to see it. And, um, you know, and what, has anybody made any comments to what's your face at, at city, um, city government about how we get those requests and how much time we have to gather to make a, a, a decision about where, where we want to go with, uh, with abatements? I did make a phone call. Okay. And I told her just that. That you know, regardless of our decision made a difference or not, we needed to have time yes. to read and discuss these things. And that in the past, they have been sending them to our homes, and that didn't happen this time. And that's what needed to happen. Okay. I think they told me something about there was some new secretary down there that didn't know something or whatever. But I told them that we would like to receive it, you know, in a uh, amount of time that we could discuss it and go over it and it needed to come back to our home. Right. So they said that they would take care of that because that's even with the meetings that they have. They call, they don't have them that often, but they call the very last minute and they said, well, we have to get the transcript to you, you know, about what's going to happen. And I told them that's not acceptable. 
Yeah, you can't call somebody the day before. That's right. Or even two days before and tell them we're going to have a meeting at 9 o'clock, you know, at the city hall. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully it'll be taken care of. We had a, a very long discussion about it, and I told them how. Who did you talk to? Um, I talked to um, to me, Ms. Woodbury, and I also mm -hmm. talked to the secretary. Oh, okay. I don't remember her name. I'm sorry. I think it's Cheryl. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they had all those things out. Because, again, when it even came to that meeting, they called, like, two days before. Mm -hmm. That's right. said, we're going to have a meeting on nine, at 9 o'clock. And, you know, you don't have the paperwork to read over, so you, you don't know what's going to happen. Right. So that's unacceptable. And, and they need to... It's, you know, just a matter of doing things in order. That's so, correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then um, we agreed to have um, have some work sessions. And um, I mentioned, um, of course, we need to have a, a finance work session in the worst way. So where are we with that? Well, that, that's for the board to decide. I, I would say for work sessions, and you know, we can have them, but I would say we need to talk to Mr. James first and see if he's going to allow folks to come to these meetings and give us information. If he's going to have administrators come uh, and give us information, that could be a work session for us. Or at least maybe we could use a work session after that meeting so that we have something to discuss. Well, my, no, and I, uh, I appreciate that, but my issue, the, the last time I spoke about work sessions, it was about, uh, we don't have any minutes to verify this, so I'm going based on my memory and the notes that I took. Uh, that we need to have a finance work session like we had earlier in the year. So Janetti has been coming, but he's got to come and straighten some stuff out. He's got to stop being absent and, and avoiding avoiding the obvious because I know he does not have he does not have all the reports that I've I've requested. Can't speak for the rest of you. So now I'm talking about a finance work session, Madam President, and the other other um, other folks. Yeah. Whatever Mr. Jennings can set up, that'll work. But right now, we need a finance work session, and I'll be doggone. I, I, you know, I do have an issue with the commission setting up a finance committee. I got an issue about that. So you're going to have a committee with people from outside the district deal with our finances when we can't even get accurate information about what the heck's going on. So that, that but that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about, Madam President. Uh, a finance work session like we had. When was the last time we had one? It was earlier this year. Yeah. It, was. it was. It was earlier this year. Well, the next one, about one we were supposed to have, Mr. Jennings wasn't there. So we just remember we had some discussion among ourselves. Yeah, right, right, right. <clears throat> but at, at least, I mean, they. I think they've changed the chairperson for the finance committee. It's now... Um, but he, it's been. And, it's he, been. Mm -hmm. and he have, does have folks outside the district. But mm -hmm. at least they're not folks that have contracts with the district as it was when Mr. Santucci had set up. But they need to be the same as the board. Right, so that, that needs to be, that's what I'm saying, so that needs to be switched. What's the next slide? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I already messaged Mr. McGee in regards to that upcoming meeting being the same night as our board meeting. Um, but yeah, everybody on that committee are, are residents of the city. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Except for one. The Just, one guy from Struthers. Yeah, he's there as an advisory capacity to explain um, he, financial. He's their treasurer. Yeah. Struthers treasurer. Actually, yeah. he lives in the city. But he lives in Youngstown. Hey, Brian Rilke. Brian. Yeah. He used to I don't work care Rilke. where he lives. He works for Struthers. No, no okay. I don't. Actually, now he's worked for Mooney County. Mooney County. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay, wonderful. But well, he lives in Youngstown. That's a whole other oh. can of worms. So, what are we, what are we in Youngstown? Some numb nuts? We don't have people that live in Youngstown with those kinds of credentials that he could have put on that commission on that committee. Come on, no, you can hold your head in your hand if you want to. I'm sick of this. What? Oh, I know. You know that's not true because I gave him a name of a person that has a degree in economics and he blew him off. Okay, that's not true. That is not true. So, but okay, I'm I'm just saying, Madam President, whenever. Um, uh, in this finance work session, I think we need, there's so much stuff that we need to talk about in terms of our finances. There's five, six people that have been recently hired, new hires, and uh, what, what, what's their salary? What impact is that going to have on, on our bottom line, on our operating funds, 
what, what, you know, he, he did riff a few folks to the tune of almost $3 million, but I mean, you hired now another six people at $100,000 a piece, or what? So, no, we, we, no, we, need, we need more financial information, and I, you know, so that I, and I can't speak for the rest of you, can present to the people that question me and my community. What the heck is going on with this, you know, these salaries, Jackie? What's going on? You want more money? Oh, okay. okay so we pick a date for a special meeting and then uh, just I tell Mr. Janess you got to meet her. Or see I if we can make sure her. that, you know, it's a date that he can meet her. Because right. if we have it and he's not there, then we're going to... Well, of course. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yeah, of course. so let's talk to him and see what I... Because, again, when I spoke to him yesterday, he told me he would be at the meeting today. I just got to... How many meetings has he missed? I too many. Too many. And this this is getting a little bit tiring. So okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not having this um, I'm not having a good day. Um, well you look really pretty today. Well thank you. <laughs> that, okay, <nothing. laughs> that doesn't mean I'm not having a good day. I'm, I'm kinda of wired this out. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're nice. You got thank that light piece. Now, anyways, <laughs> thanks, Madam President, for noticing. Um, okay, um, and and guys, I don't know if you pay attention. <laughs> New business. <coughs> Guess who that is? Who's that? That's me talking. Tina, talking to Bob Paolo De Mario. I invited him to a school board meeting, and he promised he would come, but he's yet to show. Wow. He's not <laughs> so, uh, so, so good for you though, Tina. Thank you. Good for you. Um, again, I hope you were able to get something worthwhile out of it. Uh, empty promise, I guess. Yeah. So, so, so when was that? When, did, when were you down there? That was... And what was that? What was that? From this was the... Was um, March? Yeah, this was in... It was in March. It was in March. Were you there, Brenda? No, I didn't know. Oh, you didn't know. This was the finance, the... It was the... Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, what was it? I forgot it was probably, but I think it was in March. Yeah. It was the... <laughs> it was the, um... About the state, um... The different, uh, laws and stuff, and, like, how, how the, the house bills and things like that come into effect. And he had just got done um, doing a, his presentation for the luncheon, and um, oh. and they came over and interviewed and and got me on the microphone. I said, and I made the statement. I said, well, since you're so eager to help school districts, why don't you come to Youngstown and fix the mess you created? Oh, okay. <laughs> and a bunch of people in the room started clapping. Okay. And then afterwards, um, me and him spoke, and and I shared with him how you know the the issues that were affecting Youngstown and I again reiterated that he needs to come to Youngstown and see firsthand exactly what has happened within our school district and he he said that he'd be willing to come mm -hmm. and sit at our board meeting and talk to whoever needed to talk to him and he's yet to to come. Didn't he tell you Madam President? Uh, he, he even it's not it has been that long since we testified in front of the state school board and he was there and i told them again in front of him that he had not been there and that we we've been attempting to get him here mm -hmm. since william took his seat mm -hmm. and they told us that uh he hasn't forgotten us but he's working his way down the list so i don't know how important he is but i guess he's still working his way down that list okay. and even then he didn't flinch and he didn't say that he would come mm -hmm. and he didn't say that he had been invited and that was I don't remember when that one was, but it wasn't long after mm -hmm. Tina was at that meeting. So he's not willing to come, and then he said something about if he came, House Bill 70 is the law, and, and he doesn't want to hear about mm -hmm. us, and that the things mm -hmm. pertaining that's happening to our district deals, is because mm -hmm. of House Bill 70, mm -hmm. so finances and things, that, that all deals with the, this leadership, mm -hmm. this control. But they, they don't want to hear that, so mm -hmm. he didn't come, and he has been invited over and over and over again. And he has been here too. When Mohip was, he came when Mohip first came. I met him in the office and shook his hand, mm -hmm. and that was it. And he has not come back. 
does not come back. Madam and President, I don't think he has any plans to Madam President, point of, point of order. It, it's not really unfinished business, not really new business. It's like it's, we're just having conversation now. That's, that's, that's new business, business. business, and I'm, I didn't finish, but it is right. new business. Okay. That, that hasn't been called. So we, we, oh, I thought we were in new business. We're called. We're in new business. We're in new business. What, what is the new business before we do? Oh, okay, so that was my lead in. This is my lead in. Just to remind folks, and it should be a, a continuing business, that when you travel at the expense of the district, you have to bring back a report. And, uh, so I don't know if, again, this is, you said you did this in um, March. Mm -hmm. So when you come back, that, and that's policy, maybe some kind of HR rule or law as well. But when you travel at our expense, you have to bring back a report, either written. I think that's what, what policy says, policy bylaws. And so that's the new business. That is the new business, yes. Just to remind everybody. Okay. Um, and so let me see. Um, and, and the only other thing, uh, board members, is the ODE review. Did all of you get your copies? The last one that they did March of uh, this year. Did you get your copies? Mm -hmm. I mentioned this before. There was a lot, we got dinged uh, on a lot of stuff. The district got dinged on a lot of stuff. Special ed was in there, uh, budget processes was in there. Uh, some of the same things that they keep repeating. So I really have to wonder, okay, why do they bother to come? Because nothing seems to be getting fixed. So um, I think, you know, at some meeting, maybe at one of our work sessions, we can sit down and go over, go over the ODE review and, um, you know, stuff like the five-year forecast and that kind of stuff, so that we, we have a better idea of how to tailor our questions, our concerns, uh, board plans uh, uh, moving forward. Because, you know, they got a chance to talk to everybody, I guess, they wanted to unlike us. So if, if we if we sit down, and if you guys didn't get copies of it, where did we get the copy? The you got them, but you were at that meeting. No, they took it back. Really? Yep, they did not let us keep them. Not the, not the audit. Oh, not the audit? No, they both didn't hear you in that orange oh, book. Oh, uh, yeah. Booklet. They said that that wasn't the final one. They had to take oh, it back okay. because there was issues with okay. some typos. Okay. And then fix some things that we wouldn't. Okay. We weren't going to be able to get a hard copy until it was finally released. But nobody's. So we haven't gotten. We didn't okay. get anything yet. Okay. Do you have a copy of it, Mr. Lorenzo? The latest one, the, the approved one? No. Nope. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. I mean, I got what you got that day. Oh, so you haven't gotten okay. No, same thing. No, okay. they, they haven't. Well, that okay. That gives us a template, anyway. So I'll use that word. So we could, you know, and I'm just recommending. I am recommending as, as part of one of our work sessions, future work sessions, that we take that ODE report and we go through it. Um, there's, you know, plain language they use for the most part, and their charts and graphs and the doggone thing. Very telling information, folks then that should help guide us in terms of preparing where we, you know, where we go from, from now on. That's all, Madam President. Thank you. Is there any other new business? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Ms. Kimball? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mrs. Nadir. Yes. Mrs. Sebekovich. Yes. Mr. Hunter. Yes. Mrs. Sanders. Yes. Mr. Shag. Yes. We are adjourned. Adjourned.